What's going on guys? Austin here and in this video we are going to be taking a look at the extra points five minute fantasy for week five the booming and the busting we've got the wide receivers wide receivers I don't know why I'm always better at wide receivers than I are than I am at other positions but you know if it's a coin flip on other positions you know for you go with your gut if it's a coin flip on wide receivers go with my gut that's just how it's always been. Now, Gabriel Davis versus Pittsburgh. I like this matchup because I think there's going to be a heavy Minka Fitzpatrick presence over the side that Stefan Diggs is playing. And since Pittsburgh doesn't have good corners, what that's going to leave is not only a bad corner on Gabriel Davis, but also, you know, poor safety help as well. Uh, you know, in a game where Pittsburgh is pretty good against the run. So even when it comes down to like eating clock, they're not going to be running the football all that much. Look for Gabriel Davis to have a big game uh, this week. Now, I like Chris Olave versus Seattle because as long as Michael Thomas is banged up and as long as Jarvis Landry uh, is old, which that's going to stay that way, uh, Chris Olave, to me, he was he was the offensive rookie of the year. He was always going to be the offensive rookie of the year. And so far, the last couple of weeks, he's played like that guy. Even, whether it's Jameis Winston or whether it's Andy Dalton, he's finding a way to, you know, make his statement in the offense. And with Alvin Kamara and Michael Thomas banged up against a poor Seattle, uh, not just secondary, but a poor Seattle defense overall, uh, you know, look for him to be getting those shots. Chris Godwin versus, versus Atlanta. The matchup that I really like here uh, is because I think that they're going to be putting A.J. Terrell on Mike Evans more snaps than they put him on Chris Godwin. And Chris Godwin looked good against the Chiefs. Now, obviously – the Bucs are getting blown out. But Atlanta, you know, they should be able to stop the run enough. And A.J. Terrell should be able to slow down Mike Evans enough for Chris Godwin to have a great game, uh, you know, with Tom Brady throwing him the ball. Michael Pittman at Denver. Now, I went back and forth on this one. I wasn't sure if I should include it or not. But it almost seems like... It almost seems like they're not treating him as the wide receiver one. And I think that there's going to be a lot of a lot of Patrick Sertain elsewhere, the way that the Colts are using Michael Pittman. Now, Michael Pittman's a fast receiver. He's not the type of, you know, like big, strong play guy that uh, that Patrick Sertain is used to playing against, used to locking down. You know, he's more of a of a skinny poor man's Tyree kill. And so I think that. You know, if he gets zone coverage, which he probably will if, you know, Patrick isn't on him, then he's going to be able to find those seams, break down a lot of those, and he might end up getting a 50-yard touchdown on top of, you know, his regular, you know, six receptions for 60 yards or whatever he has. Uh, and then I like Jerry Judy versus Indianapolis because Cortland Sutton, in my opinion, uh, you know, wide receiver one, he's gotten the most targets on that team, probably going to be guarded by – Guessed it, former Defensive Player of the Year, Stephon Gilmore, uh, for the Colts who, you know, while he's not good anymore, not great anymore, he's still good. Uh, and so that's going to leave Jerry Judy, you know, on an island with a lot of below average receivers. Uh, Denver's not going to be able to run the football very well you know, without Javante Williams. And as long as Melvin Gordon looks old, which there's no stopping that, Jerry Judy looks to be the preeminent receiver in this game. Now, I'm going to bust DK Metcalf versus New Orleans because, uh, you know, whenever he plays Marshawn Lattimore, all like one or two times in his career that he's ever played Marshawn Lattimore. So not trying to make it seem like a habit. But Marshawn Lattimore is, is, is great at covering big bodies. He's great, you know, with guys the size of Michael Thomas and Mike Evans and DK Metcalf. Now, last year... Uh, you know, I had that same I had that same idea and that burned me because DK Metcalf ended up catching like a 60 yard touchdown. Um, but it was one of his only two receptions in that game. So I, I, as much as I was wrong about the fantasy side of it, I really was uh, on the right track. And with a better secondary now, I don't believe that DK is going to be able to bust out, uh, you know, for that long long reception especially for a touchdown now christian kirk versus houston uh houston has two really good corners and they've got a decent pass rush rush a decent safety it just it looks like this is going to be a run a run game punt fest t higgins at baltimore um 
I think that they're going to shift more attention to doubling Jamar Chase and putting the best putting the best cornerback on T. Higgins. I like Jamar Chase to have a better game than T. Higgins. Uh, you know, Baltimore's secondary has been kind of banged up, and so I think a lot of pressure is going to be put on these guys. CeeDee Lamb at L.A., I think, you know, again, it's going to be the Jalen Ramsey on CeeDee Lamb. And CeeDee Lamb is not that great to be beating that matchup just yet. And with the Michael Gallup and the, you know, the uh, Noah Brown guys, look for CeeDee to have, uh, you know, a poor performance in this game. And then Cortland Sutton, we already talked about it. It's it's the Stephon Gilmore aspect. All right, guys, let me know what you think in the comments below. Be sure to like and subscribe so you can stay up to date on all of our future content.